Back in town, on a red eye Baby, don't make me wait Body like, uh, uh Been a long while And I just wanna taste Let's be alone I put it down When I come around we both Hey you guys, welcome to Talkin' Smack I'm Mackenzie, and this is Nola So for our first episode, we're first of all, we're so excited about this. I'm really, really pumped to get to know you guys better and you guys to get to know us better. (laughs) (laughs) We posted an anonymous link and you guys submitted tons of questions for us. So we're going to be answering those today for our first episode and we're going to get into some spicy topics, some topics that you guys have been asking about over and over (laughs) and over and over again. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about my anxiety journey and kind of how I've overcome that still overcoming it and everything in between yeah so we'll get right into it okay so there's been a lot of questions around my relationship status mm-hmm. i would say 70 percent of the questions that came through <laughs> on the anonymous app were about that yeah let's so just let's just read we're a gonna few get right into it <laughs> so are you still married are you and your hubby still together um hate to ask but i don't see your hubby in any of your posts i hope you're okay is he still around How's married life? We never see your husband anymore. You and your husband seemed perfect. What happened? Why didn't you and your husband work out? Were there any signs in the beginning that you and your husband weren't a good fit? And there were (laughs) many, many more exactly like that. So many more. So no, we are getting divorced. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm not going to go into it too much, but we just had very different visions for what we wanted in our life. And I ultimately, I wanted him to be happy. And I felt like I was never going to be the person that could make him happy. And I think vice versa too. We just, we really wanted different things. And I feel like at the end of the day, realizing that as early as we did was such a blessing because so many people stay and try to make it work and they're just unhappy and it's not worth it because you have one life and you you should be surrounding yourself with people who lift you up and excite you and want to share the same things that you want in this life. And so I feel like ultimately he's a really, really good person. And I really do hope he does find happiness in someone else. And I feel like, too, it's so important to be a whole, complete person and happy on your own. And then finding someone who also is that and coming together and creating the life that you want to create together. Compliment so, each other. yeah, exactly. You should compliment each other. So he's he's great. And I wish him well. And I am single <laughs> again. Oh. Um, do you think you and your husband split because you were so focused on the business? I, I do think that that had a lot to do with it. And that was something that I know that I could have been better with because this has been my baby for so long. I was so used to spending 90% of my time on it. I was turning down dinners with girl, my girlfriends, drinks with the girlfriends. I was turning down like family dinners because I constantly felt like I had to be working on my business. And that was just a shift that I had to make. And I don't think I really made that shift until we did split and he moved out. And I started to realize what I wanted to do with my time, how I wanted to be spending my time. And it was a huge wake up call to me that I have not been living my life. I've been throwing myself into the business and thinking that that's what needed to be done for it to be successful. And that was my own limitation that I set up in my mind. And when I realized that I could set up systems to actually live a life and run a successful business, that's when I started to really pull back. And so I do think that had a big play in a splitting But I, you know, I wouldn't change it. I feel like I've learned so much about myself and so much about how I want to do things moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, going along with that, did you learn anything from the marriage? Oh, absolutely. I feel like I I learned so much about who I want to be as a person in a relationship and what values I want in someone else, like what traits or what things I want us to share together. And I also got really firm on what I wasn't going to allow and boundaries I needed to set up for myself to just be a mentally sane human. I dealt with so much anxiety and I feel like I need a lot of alone time and I need to recharge that way. And that was something that I felt I had to give up to make sure that the relationship was flowing smoothly. And moving forward, I feel like just setting better boundaries for myself is 
overall going to create a healthier relationship. Um, and just learning that it's okay to, because I look at it like it's not a failed, it is a failed relationship, let's be honest. <laughs> but looking at it like I've grown so much from it. It's I've not learned, all failure. Right, right, exactly. And I hope he can look at it that way too. Maybe not now, but maybe one day he can, you know, look back and think about it in that way. And I still cherish our good memories. It's just, it just wasn't a fit. And I think for me, instead of looking at dating the way I did before, my views are so different now, Yeah. which again, I feel like I learned and I had to go through that experience to look at things the way that I look at them now. Yeah. So your views on marriage have changed then? Oh, absolutely. Before when I was dating, I feel like society or our parents or the own limitations we put up on our minds, not necessarily limitations, but expectations. I mean, from the time we're 10 years old, we're writing in our notebooks at school. I want to get <laughs> married by this age. I want to have babies by this age. What's I want to mash. Yes, <laughs> mash. I'm going to live in a house or a mansion <laughs> or whatever. And this is the job I'm going to have. These are the babies I'm going to have. And this is how much money I'm going to make. And I had such a timeline on myself that I felt like, oh, I found this person who loves me. I love him. This is our next step. We should get married. And instead of looking at it from a perspective of, is this a good match for me? Am I a good match for him? And I put that expectation on myself to get married because everyone else is getting married. This is the age I need to get married by. Um, this is always what I thought or envisioned for my life. And now I look at it like I have no timeline. I am not expecting to get married tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not expecting to have children right now. And I'm okay if that doesn't come for a while because I'm having so much fun by myself, learning myself again, being single and spending time with friends and doing the things that light me up outside of work that it's been really cool to kind of see and like get to know myself again. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll get married again? I definitely would get married again. <laughs> I think it's just looking at it so differently now and really truly just trying to find the right match and understanding that you know even though I might get caught up in like the fun or excitement of someone like at the end of the day you do have to have those hard conversations and you have to make sure that you are compatible with this person and because ultimately the goal would be to not get divorced <laughs> again but I mean really truly got to do what's best for you yeah exactly you have to do what's best for you at the end of the day and both parties. I mean, truly, I think it was best for both of us. Mm -hmm. So someone asked, do, did your experience, did you experience any personal life toxicity as you were growing your influencer page? Meaning, did you find you weren't really living in the moment, not turning off work? If so, what was this like? And how do you advise others not to do this? I definitely <laughs> was not living life when I was growing everything because I was so focused on the growth. I was so focused on being so consistent. I was posting one to two to three times a day on my feed and making sure that I was constantly thinking of content, constantly creating something, constantly brainstorming so I could keep up with what I thought was the demand for me to grow and become successful. And it worked. I mean, it did, but I definitely suffered personally. I had so much more anxiety than normal because I constantly, I put that expectation on myself to be on all the time. And that's really hard, especially when you're someone who needs to like retreat, be alone recharge. to recharge. And I was, I responded to every single message that I got. Uh, most of those days when I was posting that much and when I was growing, I was gaining about a hundred followers a day. And I had anywhere from 40 to 100 message requests that I would wake up to. And I made a point to respond to each and every message because I was looking at growing the community. And now I'm realizing that I was not living life. I wasn't going out with my friends. I wasn't doing the things that lit me up outside of work. And I was anxious all the time. I was having panic attacks and... And it was my own fault. It was my own expectations that I put on myself. So 
I guess my advice for anyone doing that, just realize that if you miss a day, it's not the end of the world. You're still going to grow. And look at the values. Like, why do you want to grow? Do you want to grow just for having the follower count? Because it's not worth it. (laughs) Do you want to grow because you want to reach a wider audience and make an impact on people's lives? All right. Do it sustainably. Batch work. If you miss a day, it's not the end of the world. Take the weekend off. You don't have to be on all the time because your mental health is more important than growing. So you said you're single. Somebody asked, are you in a relationship? I'm not in a relationship. (laughs) I feel like everything is way too new. I did, however, download the apps and those were like definitely entertaining. I've gotten some pretty crazy messages. (laughs) Um, I've gone on a couple dates here and there, but really kind of pulling back on that. I think it was more so just for fun. Um, But yeah, no, not in a relationship. Very much single. (laughs) Just hanging out. Someone said, been waiting for you to be single. I've loved you since elementary. When we were just some little King's kids. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> because well, I don't, I'm maybe trying to reach out. <laughs> yeah, reveal yourself. Oh, my gosh. Um, I feel like I'm blushing. <laughs> uh, have you ever cheated? No. I feel like I would be mortified. I would I also am literally the worst liar in the entire world. Like you can see it all <laughs> over my face. Even if it's like something little like a white lie, I would say like I didn't like my dinner or if I I would lie and say I liked my dinner, they'd be like literally no you don't. <laughs> like I can tell. So that would terrify me. And at that point too if I'm already having thoughts about like cheating on someone, then I know that I'm not with the right person. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way I feel too. Like why do it while you're still in the relationship? Just mm-hmm. Um, have you ever had a one night stand? No, (laughs) I'm scared. I feel like I'd get murdered. (laughs) I feel like my mom has put that in my head. Like anytime I've been going on dates, like even before five years ago when I was going on dates, she's like, they could murder you. So just be careful. Like, tell us where you are. (laughs) Where's your location? So no, I would be way too scared. Um, how old were you when you lost your virginity? Um, 16, almost 17. Yeah. That's- I won't go into details. <laughs> okay. Um, doggy or missionary? Oh my gosh. Am I answering these questions? <laughs> I didn't know I was answering these. Can I say both? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now I'm really blushing. <laughs> Probably can't tell makeup on there, but. If you could hook up with any famous person, who would it be? Ooh. There's so many that <laughs> no, like, right? come to mind. Part of me goes straight to thinking like Jason Momoa because I feel like I'd feel so small. Mm-hmm. And just Or Ryan Reynolds. Those are classics. I feel like I'd want to go on a date with Ryan Reynolds. I know that's my funny. thing. I'm more like personality. Like I got mm-hmm. to get to know you first. Yeah. <laughs> or even like this is – I don't know who I think of. Like Lauren, my best friend, she loves Pete Davidson and thinks he he's hilarious. And like he would be someone that like I would – find attractive even though not normally like not like walking down the street yeah. or something but yeah okay how do you feel about open relationships do you mm. think they really work I don't know I've never been in an open relationship I have no idea I've never met anyone in an open relationship and that's what's been so funny on the apps like I see so many people who are like ENM like uh ethically non-monogamous non-monogamous that's a hard word. Monogamous. <laughs> I can't even say it. Um, whatever it is. But like there's so many couples on the apps and like I'll swipe left on them and they all say like, oh, you missed a potential map match. Like they swipe <laughs> right on me. And so I don't know how that works. I don't know if I could like share someone, mm-hmm. you know, like I don't know if I would feel weird about it. I feel like there'd have to be like a lot of ground rules, a lot of, a lot of communication. Um, well, what about being the single person in that? Ooh, I feel like I'd <laughs> like to be the single person more. I think that'd I don't, be fun. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd be able to actually do that or wrap my head around it. Because um, I feel like I'd have like that like scared feeling of like, oh, what if this girl doesn't yeah. actually like being in a relationship like this, an open relationship, and she come, she murders me. <laughs> I just have a lot of fear about being murdered, I guess. It's pretty valid. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I think they can work for some people. I think if people have the right mindset around it and they have the right communication, I think it can work for them. I've heard some crazy stories about, like, 
swingers and open relationship couples like having kids together and like co-parenting and all this stuff but like I don't I think me personally I don't think I could Mm -hmm. but I think other people could yeah so I didn't really answer the question but (laughs) yeah do your thing um what's your biggest insecurity Mm, I feel like I've gotten to a place where I feel really confident in who I am and what I do because the alternative is me being insecure and constantly being worried about things but I would say a long time ago I was like insecure about like having an opinion like I didn't Mm. want other people to I was so worried about other people having an opinion on what I thought yeah oh 100% people pleaser but I feel like now I've gotten to a place where I've kind of outgrown that because I've realized within so much of my life I've learned that you literally have to do what you want to do and probably I don't know. Sometimes I like say stupid shit <laughs> or like I'll ask a question and they're like, like the other day we were at a wedding on the hood canal and I was like, is this the lake? And they're like, this is literally the ocean. Like this is the hood canal. And I was like, <laughs> like rewind that. So I feel like, I mean, asking stupid questions is probably one of my biggest insecurities because I do it way too often. <laughs> but yeah. What was your worst day ever? Ooh. It's a really broad question. There's been a couple. I think probably just like deaths in the family, mm-hmm. like losing family members. Like when my papa passed away, we were all there at the house. And so like watching him take his last breath, that oh. was like really hard. And so that was definitely tough. I mean, obviously we had our whole family there, so we all had each other. But it was just I had never experienced anything like that before. So that was really hard. And then when we put our black lab Nani down, she was my girl. Mm -hmm. Because when I was working out of my parents' house for that whole year, she was at the house with me all day. And so I would take her on runs every day. We would go on walks. Like I literally would take her on a run in the morning and then a walk like on my lunch break. And it was just us the entire last year of her life. And then when we put her down, I literally canceled three weeks of clients because I was just in bed bawling every day. I was like, I had my friend with me all the time and Mm -hmm. now she's gone. That was tough. Mm -hmm. I like cried about Nani like years after we put her down. Uh, Do you have any known haters? Not that I know of. (laughs) I mean, I would like to think that I don't have any, but there's definitely been some like really funny trolls on my (laughs) Instagram. What was that one about lashes the other day? Oh, yeah, the guy said something. And then this other girl came in and was like, go make your wife some lunch or something. I don't know. I definitely have the some. comments are funny. I definitely have some random trolls that will just be like, these are ugly. I'm like, okay, <laughs> she likes them. What do you want me to do about it? Um, don't get them then. But yeah, I mean, hope no like outwardly known haters, apparently. Not yet anyway. What was it like going to a private school? Did you like it? I didn't know anything different. So I didn't have anything to compare it to. And of course, like my friends that I still have, I've known them since I was five. And well, one in particular, Lauren. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, I didn't have anything to compare it to. The only thing I didn't like about it was because it was so small, you knew everyone's first and last name. You know who everyone was talking to. It was like you walked into a place and you you had to sit and think like, what did they know about me? Or what is something that like they may have heard or what are their preconceived ideas of who I am? And I feel like that was really hard for me because I really struggled with thinking like, oh, these people think I'm this or these people think I'm that or these people heard I said this or heard I was talking to this person and now they think of me a different way or look at me a different way. And when I lived in LA right after high school, I just lived in LA for the summer and I it was so cool being able to live in LA and be like, wait a minute, none of these people know me. None of these people have any preconceived ideas of who I am or what I'm about, and I can create the person I want to be. And I feel like that really kind of helped me get out of my own head in realizing, oh, all these things I'm thinking about other people, they're thinking about me, but I actually don't even know this person. I have no idea what they're about. I've never walked a day in my life in their shoes. And 
they could be completely different than I even think. And so I kind of just got out of my own way after that. So I feel like that was the toughest part. But ultimately, like, there were some teachers I really loved. There were some teachers I really didn't like. <laughs> but I feel like I got a really good group of friends out of it. And I wouldn't change it. Were you confident or comfortable in your own skin when you were little and growing up? I feel like yes and no. There were certain aspects of my life I felt really confident. Like with sports, I was really lucky and always very athletic. And I was so confident anytime sports we play were playing sports or like a recess or whatever. <laughs> like I always was like the tomboy. Yeah, I'm super competitive. And like when the boys would pick me like in the top three to be on their <laughs> team, I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> or like I thought it was super funny. Um, but I definitely like – I never felt super girly. So I I feel like I've always kind of been more masculine energy. And I feel like that's helped me in business. That's helped me with work and showing up that way. So I feel like a part of me was always insecure feeling like, oh, I'm just the tomboy. Like I've never been that like super feminine, like dressy, girly girl. But then there were parts of me that like really loved makeup and really loved dressing up and doing all of that. And so I feel like as I got older, I got more confident in blending the two. But I would say overall, I was, I've always kind of been confident. And I feel like I have to thank my mom for that. My mom has always drilled it into our heads. You can be whatever you want to be. You just have to believe you can. And you can change whatever situation you're in. You literally just have to find a way out. And my dad's kind of always been that way too, as far as like, thinking about if you if there's a situation you can't control there's literally no point in stressing over it just do what you can and if you can control it then fix it and change it and I feel like that really helped mold little tiny Kenzie <laughs> to be confident and not stress too much about a lot of things so do you, do you think you'll have kids within the next three years the next three years <laughs> so specific I mean I'm 27 now by 30. I honestly, I have no idea. I think that's the funniest thing about timelines is I had such a timeline for myself before. And I feel like that led me to make decisions I wouldn't make now. And so I would like to have children. I do want little babies, <laughs> um, but I don't have a timeline for myself. So if that means I'm 35 and having a geriatric pregnancy, <laughs> then <laughs> there's that. But we'll see. I want them. I just don't know if that's going to happen within the next three years. Mm -hmm. What's your dream house? My dream house? Ooh, honestly, I'd like to live on the water. I feel like waking up. In Edmonds? Up, I don't know. In Edmonds, on Lake Washington. Um, in Washington? I don't know. I like the sunshine. I feel like I thrive when the sun is out, and I'm such a hermit through the fall and winter here that – Part of me, you know what? I want to have houses everywhere. Why can't I have both? I want a house in Edmonds. I want a house in Lake Washington. I want a house yeah, probably this is in like dream. California, Florida, <laughs> France. All over. I want to visit all the places. <laughs> um, it'd be really cool to live in Bali. I feel like eventually I want to do like a month in Bali or something. That'd be fun. To just be a digital nomad and explore and just be on the water. Um, what's your favorite drink? Martini. What alcohol is a hell no to you? <sighs> I'm thinking of a TikTok that's like, I never met an alcoholic drink I didn't like. <laughs> um, I I love tequila. I love vodka. I feel like, actually, Jameson. I had a really bad experience with Jameson. I was like, bad experience on my part because I didn't know when to stop. <laughs> and I was just throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, throwing up. And uh, I just haven't drank it since. Isn't Jameson in all your favorite shots? <laughs> Literally, yes. Right after that came out of my mouth, I was like, oh, that's in a green tea shot. But yeah, green tea shots have been the thing lately. But yeah, we always do Jaeger bombs too. So I like Jaeger. Um, <laughs> so bad. Yeah, Jameson is in all the shots that we've been taking lately. <laughs> Isn't it in... Um, have you had a Scooby snack before? I just did the other day. Oh, yeah. So the ones that we had the other day, they made them way better the time before. Or we were a little more drunk before, and that's probably why they were better <laughs> the first time. Um, but, yeah. So I guess I do drink Jameson. I guess you just like it all. I guess so. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to try more. I feel like I stick to my yeah. things. 
Have you tried a peanut butter whiskey? Actually, you know what? I think my brother had peanut butter whiskey once and I tried a sip and I was like, that does not taste like peanut butter at all. But it was like <laughs> a very like faint aftertaste of peanut butter. I feel like if I tried it again, I might like it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, are aliens among us? Among us or out there? <laughs> because those are two totally different questions. That's true. I feel like, honestly, there's got to be stuff out there. I feel like this universe is so big that like how is there not other life forms? I don't know. I went down a huge conspiracy theory like – TikTok trail one day rabbit hole that I just kept going down and down and down and down and down and I somehow am now convinced that there are aliens but I don't know if they're among us like then I just picture men in black like unzipping like their suit or something you know what I mean like I don't think they're among us on earth but I think they're among us in the universe mm -hmm. is there anything you regret Mm, you know what? I listened to a really good podcast all about regret and I actually bought the book. I'll have to link it in the show notes. But he talked about regrets in two different perspectives uh, in an only if or if if only regret and a, at least mm. like if I could look at it in the perspective of if only I worked harder in my marriage or if only I realized what I really wanted out of a relationship I couldn't have gone I wouldn't have gone through all of this or I can look at it at least I learned so much from this experience and so instead of looking at regret as a bad thing I'm looking at it now as a tool to help me avoid situations in the future or just know better what to do or what situations to avoid or what things to go after or what I actually want and so I feel like it was really cool. And the book is really fascinating just talking about different instances. And one of the examples was um, an Olympian. So you look at your first, second, and third place. The second place person is saying, if only I worked harder. Third place person is saying, at least I placed. At least I got third. Like, this is amazing. And so I think it's just a mindset thing. Like, how can you look at your regrets and learn from them rather than sit there and live your whole life regretting a decision or regretting someone you didn't ask out or regretting not taking a job or regretting quitting a job. Like look at it and move on instead of sitting there and ruminating on it because what's the use? You're sitting in a rocking chair worrying and stressing and you're not getting anywhere. What makes you want to switch gears to focusing on things that are not lash related? I feel like for me over the last few years, I've been really thinking about what kind of impact I want to make and what I'm doing in the lash world, what I've done in the lash world. And I kind of have felt like I'm in a box. I have felt like I've been talking about all the same things. And although I could have kept my name and still kept in the lash world and still talked about mindset things and still talked about all of these other things and woven them in, I felt like I just needed to make a shift with the name and like with it, with starting the podcast too, I feel like it's just going to open me up to a broader audience to make an impact in a different way, in a bigger way, because my values have always been I want to help other people feel confident in their lives, in their business, in their relationships, whatever that be. I think just making that shift to let people know that they literally can do anything they want. They can create the life they want. They can create their own person like they can create themselves the way that they want to just because they think oh I've always been a procrastinator you don't always have to be a procrastinator you can change that you can change the way you do things you can change your habits you can become your favorite version of yourself and I think I just needed to make the shift and make the name change to get out of my own way of thinking and it was really scary too because I feel like okay I have made a name for myself in the lash world I have you know really established myself as Maclash, and I didn't want to hide behind that anymore because I felt like I was holding myself back from actually talking about all the things I've been wanting to talk about. And again, that's me in my own mind. That's putting my own expectations and limitations on myself. But for me, I felt like I needed to make a more tangible shift. And especially with talking about the talking about starting the podcast, I think that's really helped 
and it is going to really help propel me into a new space of being able to we- reach reach a wider audience, <laughs> <laughs> reach a wider audience to just connect with more people on a deeper level than talking about what adhesive to use or what lashes are my favorite. And I think to showing people that uh, like other side of me, that real side of me, not just not just the lash, not just Mac lash. You touched on having anxiety and panic attacks. How are you doing with that? Are you have you figured out how to overcome that? Yes and no. I definitely still have like a little bit of anxiety here and there, but I used to like so identify. I would tell people I'm an anxious person. I'm an anxious person. That wasn't helping me get over any of my anxiety. So I had about two years where I had panic attacks three to five to seven times a week. And it was a huge struggle because I realized I was one causing it myself because of the expectations I put on myself because of the limitations I put on myself. My mindset was not anywhere near it is now. And that's the thing too. You have to be working on it. Excuse me. You have to be working on it every single day. And I think really for me, I wasn't working out. I was not eating right. And I went in and I I got um, prescribed anti-anxiety medication. And I was on it for about two and a half weeks. And then I started having horrible suicidal thoughts. And it was the weirdest thing ever because it was like it was a different voice in my head. It wasn't my own inner monologue. And I freaked out. I just stopped taking them immediately. And you're supposed to wean yourself off. But I was like, I'm not doing this. And... So after that, I was like, instead of looking at how can I minimize these symptoms, I started to look at it as what is the root cause of this? What am I doing in my life that I'm causing myself this much stress? And I was working eight to 10 hour days, six days a week. I had no time to do things that I wanted to do. And at that point, I didn't even think I wanted to do anything else. I didn't think I wanted to have a life outside of work because I was so used to being the workaholic. And at that point, hustle culture was so big that we thought it was a badge of honor that we didn't get to eat lunch. We thought it was a badge of honor that all we had was an iced coffee all day. And now I've shifted so much to be like, if I'm this anxious all the time, I'm going to be no use to anybody. (laughs) I'm no use to myself. Like this is miserable. I'm miserable all the time. And I started to look at, okay, when was I actually not anxious? When was I a calm, peaceful person? And I started to identify all the things that stressed me out. And I started working out again. And I started eating healthier. And it's not something that I changed all at once because I still wanted my bag of Doritos every once in a while or like – I still wanted to go through McDonald's and get a cheeseburger or a McChicken. And so when I started to make those changes, I started to work out again. I started to realize that that was the biggest thing for me that helped me not be anxious. I needed to get that anxious energy out. And so this is probably four years ago. I started running and I would run and then I started weightlifting. And now I work out with a trainer who I see three times a week and I told him because I started working out with him probably four months ago and I was still anxious all the time. I still had a lot of anxious energy. I had trouble sleeping. And since I've been working out with him and since I've been more mindful about what I've been eating and actually putting muscle on and feeling strong, I am so calm and so much more peaceful. And I knew that that was a huge thing. And that's the tough part about it is because – Nobody wants to get up and work out every single day. I do now, but in the beginning, it's so hard. And especially we're, we're humans who love instant gratification. And when you're getting back in shape or you're starting to eat well, it's not instant. It's never going to be instant. And so being patient is really fucking irritating <laughs> because nobody wants to wait four months to be like, oh, I feel great now. I feel strong. Or I... I'm not having panic attacks anymore, but it takes the effort and the time to identify what it is that's causing you stress. And part of it was business stuff too. And I mean, you know, Nola, I've passed off so many things to you to take care of. And that's taken a huge weight off my shoulders because I constantly felt like 
I have to be doing every single role in my business for it to be successful. No one's going to be able to do it like me. I know I've used this before, but I used to think I'm like, no one else can vacuum the space. I have to be the one that vacuums the space. Nobody's going to vacuum as good as me. And how stupid of me to look at things like that because, and I started to look at it in the perspective of done is better than perfect. And that actually has helped me become more consistent and let a lot of that stress go because I can always go back in and perfect little things and tweak little things. But if I'm holding myself back from putting out content or getting things out because it's not quite yet perfect, I'm going to be sitting there waiting when I could have been making a difference in other people's lives or making an impact the way that I want to. And now I'm rambling and forgot what the question even was. (laughs) Oh, anxiety. But yeah, so basically like I think my advice for that is you just have to identify what stresses you out and get rid of it. Honestly, like for me, and that's more of like a woo-woo thing to like look at, but like what feels good to you? What jobs do you like? What um, aspects of your job are your favorite? Keep those. The other things, if you can hire them out and it's going to be better for your mental health, take the cut. Like pay somebody else to do those things because your mental health is so important and to be able to take care of yourself so you can excel in the parts of your business that you want to excel in, it's worth it. All right. We hope you guys love this episode and we can't wait to get more episodes out to you guys. Like, subscribe, and make sure to share the show with your friends. For a chance to win a t-shirt, write us a review. (laughs) Thanks for watching, you guys.